Hello, fellow leaders. How would you like to understand the common issues organizations face at different points in their life cycle? The DC's corporate life cycle framework was created by Dr. Dishak Adesis. Yep, there he is. Dr. Adesis doesn't believe organizations need to die, and the framework is a tool that helps leaders understand the common issues faced by organizations at different points in their life cycles. It enables us to save time and effort as we guide our organizations successfully between stages on a quest to achieve and maintain pride. A challenge of the framework is that organizations can oscillate between stages or transition rather rapidly, making it more difficult to identify which stage your organization is in, and therefore more difficult to effectively leverage the framework to guide your organization through the stages. But for now, let's just talk about the framework. In general, there are two groups of stages. There are growth stages and decline stages. Let's go through each stage and get a sense of what they mean, some common pitfalls, and then let's apply the framework to a real-world example. Courtship is the first stage in the life cycle. At this stage, the company is just an idea, and if the idea is never acted on, the company fails before it even begins. Dr. Adesis calls this failure an affair. The infancy stage begins the moment the founder takes a financial risk. The risk of failure, or infant mortality, is great in this stage. Common causes include negative cash flow, lack of managerial depth, and unhappy customers. Go-Go. Nope, not like the song. Seriously though, the Go-Go stage is really exciting. At this stage, the company is growing exponentially. Be careful though, at this stage an organization risks over diversifying and spreading itself too thin. It can also fall into a founder's trap or not letting go of control. So founders, make sure you delegate. Things are good, you've been selling like crazy. Now it's time to bring in more professional managers and decentralized authority. Welcome to adolescence. Be careful though, because at this point, Early stage employees can feel disenfranchised and infighting can really thrive and destroy the company. Open the champagne! You've successfully navigated the first four stages to reach the pinnacle, the prime stage! In this stage, your organization has achieved the perfect balance between flexibility and control. It's hard to maintain, so make sure you stay innovative, otherwise your organization might prematurely age. You're cash rich, you don't see clients much anymore, your organization lacks a sense of urgency, is suspicious of change, and talks about the good old days. You're in the fall now. Remember those risks you used to take? Didn't think so. Organizations at aristocracy stage focus on low risk goals and financials. Hey, why build something new when you can just acquire another company that's already done it? Uh oh, your organization's decline is obvious. People are getting their pitchforks and torches and going on a good old fashioned witch hunt. Welcome to the recrimination stage. Okay, somehow you survived the witch hunt. Did Uncle Sam bail you out? It's possible. In the bureaucracy stage of the Adesis corporate life cycle, organizations provide little value, run off rich systems and rules, and are kept afloat by artificial means. Death. It's been a good run, but it's over now. Organizations don't need to meet their ends if leaders pay attention to the first nine stages and manage themselves and their companies appropriately. So now that we've talked about all 10 stages of the Adesis corporate life cycle, let's apply the framework to a real world company and see what we learn. Pan Am was a preeminent airline for decades. They were the largest air carrier and one of the most recognized brands in the world. Pan Am founders exited this courtship stage in 1927 when they founded Pan Am as a holding company. The real financial risk was taken in 1928 by Juan Tripp when he acquired the company. For all intents and purposes, Tripp was the founder of Pan Am and avoided infant mortality by securing lucrative contracts transporting U.S. mail. Pan Am's go-go stage lasted from the 1920s to early 1960s with much of its growth enabled by the government contracts. Pan Am took advantage of every opportunity they could, but avoided being stretched too thin by sheer luck. They were limited to what they could do with the plan. The adolescent stage for Pan Am is unique. They arguably professionalized when one trip required the company, and they pretty much skipped this phase with the help of government contracts. They did achieve prime in the mid-1960s, right before one trip retired. They had a robust organizational structure, was a preeminent airline, and had a flexibility to invest and innovate as they saw the fit. Given their position, Pan Am became complacent, and they entered the fall in the late 1960s. Pan Am entered the aristocracy phase in 1969-1970 after introducing the Boeing 747. They made the decision to introduce the plane to try to increase the revenue per route, a perceived low-risk financial decision at the time. But as it turns out, the implementation of the plane created an overcapacity problem for Pan Am, and they didn't have enough customers to fill the planes. At the same time, an external shock made the overcapacity problem even worse, and Pan Am's precarious financial position became abundantly clear. Employees eventually took out an ad in the New York Times blaming the U.S. government for the company's poor financial performance. 
bureaucracy solidly set in at Pan Am in the mid-1970s as new CEO William Sewell cut costs. But what really saved the company was a tax loss credit from the U.S. government. Pan Am did attempt to regain its former glory in 1989 with a bid to buy competitor Northwest Airlines, but their bid was beat and Pan Am filed for bankruptcy in January 1991, finally sealing the company's fate and thus completing the corporate life cycle. Had Juan Tripp and other senior leaders had access to this framework, they would have been able to assess Pan Am's life cycle stage, identify common issues, and steer Pan Am towards continued success. As it stands, Pan Am fell into common traps, especially in the prime stage. A few of these common issues are a desire to maintain the status quo, decreased entrepreneurial activity, reliance on what has worked in the past, and a sense of security with no sense of urgency. I hope you gained some great takeaways and enjoyed watching this video. Thank you.